Chapter 7, Forbidden Hand Oh, Sasaki Kuen? He came back not too long ago. Huh? Following my encounter with Milady, I continued to run around inside the school building. My last stop was the rooftop. As the student council is responsible for it, the door to the outside naturally wasn't open, but you could at least go up the stairs that lead to it. I figured that I might be able to spot a couple or two there, possibly Sasaki as a part of that, but when I peeked around the corner, there was nobody at all. Man, I'm gonna get some good-ass sleep tonight. Since my Sasaki search skill is only at level 5, I guess this is my limit. I checked all the places I'd expect him to visit judging from his personality and behavior, and I still had no luck. Checking my phone, I got no response from Ichinose-san or Sasaki-san either. They had no success in finding Yuki-chan. I also asked Ashida for help, but she didn't even read my message, did she block me? Now that it's come to this, I decided to rely on my senses and return back to the classroom only to be greeted by our class rep to give me a definitive witness report. I mean, he's gotta work as the seat filler now, remember? It'd be bad if he didn't come back. Also, take that off. Ah, uh, wa, I hoshi-san. This is the hallway. We're in public. She tried to pull down the zipper from my costume, so I had to stop her. Thankfully, she let me at least change inside the classroom's back area. And that's where Sasaki should be, too. Oh, right. I totally forgot that Sasaki still had a shift today. While I was searching for him all over the place, he was already back in the classroom. What an absolute waste, but since he came back here in time, that means he didn't run into Yuki-chan, right? Knowing her, she would definitely not let him go if she found him. That bastard, flirting around with a girl while getting off free like that. I should be allowed to give him a smack on the shoulder, right? Hey, Sasaki, huh? I spotted two people, awkwardly wearing a rat and cow costume. Then there was Yasuda, only wearing a black shirt, and Sasaki in the back, sitting on a chair like a dead corpse, huh? Didn't he go on a festival date with a girl? Why is he looking so depressed? Maybe he ran into Yuki-chan after all? Did something happen? But was he freed already? Hum, Saju? You came back. Come on, I need your costume. Yeah, yeah, Hum? Hold on. He's gonna wear my costume? He had no problem with it though, just putting it on in silence. I felt a lot of furs glued to my back. I could feel the crepe I ate with Ichinose-san and the others turning and twisting inside my stomach. Any more, and I might just create raw cream from my mouth. Meanwhile, Sasaki participated in the riddle tournament as if nothing had happened. He came in as a sub to help out, and yet he's the most popular. How is that fair? We are wearing the exact same costume, yet this difference in treatment, he's more of a shepherd than me. Then again, complaining about it won't do me any good, and I couldn't ask him about Yuki-chan either. I doubt she'd come storming in here right now, so I guess I can leave things be for a moment. If she did, I'd have to beat up both her and Sasaki. After changing into my uniform and stepping out of the classroom, the phone in my pocket vibrated. We found Yuki-chan. I moved to the back of the eastern school building. Walking through a garden arch covered with flowers that hadn't been tended to in a while, I reached a gazebo. My lady, don't you know that certain circumstances led to entry here being prohibited? But I pressed further when I spotted three girls sitting at a circular bench. Yuki-chan, Ichinose-san, and Sasaki-san. Middle school, JC, high school, JK, and university student, JD, all together, oh, wait. 
Well, leaving the debate if Sasaki-san has the D in her name or not for later, seeing them gathered in an isolated place like that is very nice. It's like my exhaustion is being healed. Maybe I should just watch them for a while. Ah. Saju senpai Oh. Guess not. Well, there's not really much space here to hide anyway. Once I took a few steps further, Sasaki-san immediately spotted me. The sadness of not being able to watch any longer and the joy of her finding me this easily mixed together. Ah, stop fighting over me, you too. He's wearing his uniform. Ichinose-san commented, placing her hand on Yuki-chan's, who sat between the two, as she sighed. She had so much restraint when it came to Yuki-chan not too long ago, so what happened for them to be this close? Yuki-chan, did you meet Sasaki? Sajukuan. When I called out to her, Yuki-chan showed no reaction. Instead, Ichinose-san repeated my name. It's fine, I know how delicate of a topic Sasaki is for her. It's like playing a game of hot potato except with a bomb. But, I still have to ask her, or we won't get anywhere. I didn't. She commented without revealing much emotion, simply staring down at the ground in front of her. Yeah, this isn't normal. The Yuki-chan I know is always ready to snap at you whenever she isn't with Sasaki. She probably would have pushed away Ichinose-san's hand, too. Since she wasn't throwing around chants that consisted 99% of the word Onichan, I knew something was off. Um, I spotted her walking around all alone. That's what Sasaki-san said when I asked her. Since something didn't feel right about Yuki-chan, she was fairly easy to spot even amongst the crowd. Am I the only one who thinks that something wasn't right about her since day one? When is Yuki-chan even acting normally? So then, Hom? Right, as I wanted to continue the conversation, Sasaki-san moved first. She moved a bit away from Yuki-chan, creating enough space for one more person to sit down. And then she looked up at me, almost as if she wanted me to sit there, I have to sit there? Really? Surrounded by all these JS? Weird, I was planning on just getting this over with, and yet the situation changed drastically. Sitting there would bring me in close distance from these other two. Could you, possibly open up a bit more space? Naturally, I have no complaints about being squished by three girls like that, but I can't quite say I have the courage to follow through with that, and I worry for my health because my heart might not be able to take it. Naturally, my greatest desire right now is to just leap in there. I always wished to be between Natsukawa and Ashida whenever they were doing their Yuri stuff, but I didn't think such a chance would ever arise. But for now, Yuki-chan's feelings are more important than mine. Why are you just standing around like that? Ah, uh, my bad. Now I even got permission from both sides. What's the point of being one year older than them if they just push me around? Maybe I'm just lame for writing two whole paragraphs of monologue about something that ultimately didn't even matter. This isn't the time to be embarrassed about sitting next to two cute girls. I don't think Yuki-chan would like it very much if I just stared at her from the front. The fear of her overwrote my embarrassment in an instant. I glanced over at Sasaki-san to make eye contact and then sat down next to her. Whoa, I can feel all my luck for the rest of the year running out. Eh. Hom. Huh. Eh. However, everything that arrived after this decisive moment was utter silence. I'm not trying to enjoy this moment or anything. I know I gotta be the one to move this conversation forward. Me being silent won't help anybody. So? What happened? Hom. I just looked ahead of me as I asked. I won't turn towards Yuki-chan. I felt like something sharp would be stabbed right into my thigh. 
I can't be careless whenever Weapon Master Yuki-chan is involved. However, no response came. Then again, I didn't expect to get a proper answer in the first place, so that's fine. I just have to make up my own deductions and see what's right and wrong. You were looking for Sasaki, but didn't meet him. Hom. That means you spotted him somewhere. Seeing Yuki-chan's reaction, I was sure of it. It didn't take that long for Yuki-chan to act weird like this. Hence, it can only be because of Sasaki. There's no doubt in my mind that she saw Sasaki somewhere. What's weird is that she isn't currently with him. Knowing her, she would leap at him disregarding the situation. I've never seen anything like that. Huh? A face like that, from Onichan? Hom. Hom, yeah, I have no clue. All I know is that Sasaki had a weird expression, which is why Yuki-chan didn't approach him. And an expression she never saw him with? Maybe him being absolutely lovey-dovey? I'm gonna kill that bastard. What kind of face was it? Sajukuin. Ichinose-san must have her own thoughts after she had her brother stolen. Since they came from similar environments, she's clearly playing Yuki-chan's ally. That being said, something's clearly different. I don't mean that in a rude way, but unlike their senpai, Sasaki is popular. According to what I heard, he had been like that even in middle school, and Yuki-chan should be aware of that, considering she always keeps a watchful eye over him. He was confessed to buy some vixen, and his face was as red as a tomato. Now hold on a damn second. Am I hearing things? Yeah, probably not, knowing him. It was a reality hard to swallow, which put a full stop to all my thoughts. That's one topic I'd rather not be forced to take seriously, honestly. Welp, that makes sense. Yes. Well, why are you getting all depressed as well, Suju-senpai? Don't worry about it. So it's finally happened for him, huh? Not to mention that he was blushing? You got something you like already, don't you? You're the upcoming ace of the soccer club, popular, and yet you're this innocent? Are you just trying to piss all the unpopular guys off, Mr. Perfect? Ima kick you off the Tajinbo cliff. And you saw that very moment? Hom. Yes, all three of us did. Wait, you two were with her? Because we saw Yuki-chan walking towards the back of the school building, so. Seriously. They were all watching it? What are three girls like them even doing behind the school building? Guess I was careless in leaving these two alone. I should stick with them from now on whenever we go out somewhere, then again, will a day like this ever come again? Come, I beg you. Can't say I'm too happy about that, I mumbled. Burke, I'm sorry. I knew I shouldn't, but I couldn't look away. And I couldn't stop these two. Witnessing such a situation for the first time, Sasaki-san couldn't hold back her curiosity, whereas Ichinose-san didn't have the strength and power to stop them, or so it seems. Since all three witnessed this scene out of their own desire, I really can't speak in protection for them. If Yuki-chan hadn't seen that, we wouldn't be sitting here either. But, I guess it'd be insensitive of me to just guess what a girl like her is thinking. I should install a maiden's heart dictionary later. Also, is this the first time you saw Sasaki getting confessed to? I feel like you'd be watching him from a remote location at all times. Why are you just assuming I got drones in the sky above him? The best I can do is pick up the sound. So, she's got taps on him. Well, I'm not surprised. Chasing after him with footage alone could prove difficult. She's probably got a small drone or wiretap attached to him, or she's using some pen she gave him as a present as a hidden microphone. Maybe she'd even set up cameras wherever Sasaki would go? 
but that's a bit too hard to pull off. Wait, why am I even taking any of this seriously? Oni-chan had been confessed to many times before. Though the last time was in middle school. And now you actually saw it with your own eyes? No, that's not it. Huh. Before, he'd always rejected them. Saying stuff like I want to focus on soccer. In reality, I'm sure it's just because I am with him. No, I'm pretty sure it's because of his soccer club. The more I listen to this, the more I realize how much more different this situation is from Ichinose Sans. Like the number of faults and all that. Can I even help with anything here? If I had to say something, then Sasaki's reaction has me dubious. Why would he blush at a confession when he's got feelings for Natsukawa? Wait a second, what if Natsukawa was the one who confessed? No, 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 no. Calm down. I'm gonna die. That's impossible. I met with her when I was looking for him. Time-wise, that alone shouldn't work out, and Natsukawa wouldn't skip work to do something like that. I may have tried to raise Sasaki into a good guy so that I can let him have Natsukawa, but I'm still nowhere near ready to accept such a reality. I feel like I'm gonna throw up. Blag. Um, Sajukuin. Why are you looking more pale than Yuki-chan? It's nothing. This isn't the time to get depressed. Why am I just blowing stuff up in my own face? The damage I received just thinking about it is laughably huge. Why am I even ruining my mood while surrounded by two girls like this? Hum. Leaving aside the whole Natsukawa thing, the Sasaki, I know, doesn't compare to the one Yuki-chan described. He's not nearly as passionate about soccer anymore. To me, it looks more like he's an incredibly annoying yet skilled balancer. Clever, good at sports, and popular in class. I think he's not the same Sasaki you know from middle school. Huh? For example, Sasaki-san, Yuki-chan, what would you do if a boy suddenly confessed to you right now? H huh? Since they're both girls, they must like this whole talk about love. That being said, the situation changes when you're actively taking part in it. Well, blushing here would mean they have someone they like, so I wouldn't mind receiving that information in exchange. Oni-chan. No, that's not it. W.L., I want to focus on my studies right now, so I would probably decline, I think. Sasaki-san argued. That's right. You're both about to enter exam season. It makes sense that you'd want to focus on that, and you're probably thinking about love and all that after you become a high school student. H. How did you know? Because I was the same, and I think that goes for the majority of people. Ah. Well, to be perfectly honest, I was all about love my entire time in middle school. Becoming a high school student was just another status I wanted to achieve in my youth. But in reality, I took several steps backward, not even calling the girl I care for by her first name, how did things end up this way? Either way, Sasaki was an idiot for slipping away from his committee work. Thinking that clever guy just skipped work because the captain of the soccer club said so doesn't quite feel right, but if a part of his decision was influenced by the desire to play soccer, then I would accept that. Still would give him an earful for skipping, though. Since we're talking about Sasaki, I'm sure he's still into soccer as much as before. Knowing his personality, he probably thought that love was too quick for him in middle school, and that's why he distanced himself from it. However, he's not the same as he was back then. Right now, he should be at least interested in love, and how to look good in the eyes of Natsu, of girls. No way, who's that person you were about to name? I just stuttered, don't mind me. Yuki-chan's abyss black eyes were looking up at me. I'm scared, it took all of me to just look away. 
I feel like that gaze of hers might turn into a piano thread to cut my carotid artery. It's gonna splash everywhere, and I'm gonna be dead like a fish on land. When a hottie's interested in love, there's nothing you can do about it, huh? So, what? Are you telling me to become independent from my brother, too? Hum. No, not at all. You're siblings, you should still spoil and be spoiled. Don't just be so blunt with it, Ichinose-san still isn't over her own situation with her brother. That's a forbidden topic from now on, okay? And the way she made it sound makes it clear that she had had a similar conversation like this before. Since Sasaki-san didn't know about her Brokon tendencies, I doubt it was someone from the same middle school. So, either her parents or Sasaki himself. If there was one aspect that was the same between Yuki-chan and Ichinose-san, then it's the fact that they want their older brother to only look at them. As for the differences, it's the ability to hide their feelings, and the fact that they don't know how to properly get their feelings under control. I do understand that Ichinose-san is a lot more mature about this, though. However, I think you should accept that your brother won't always stay with you. Hum. I'm sure he's been a great brother up until now. Caring, consider it without you having to say anything, just spoiling you the way you want it. That's how your broke-on tendencies only got worse, right? Th they did not. It just looks that way because Oni-chan is so kind to me. And you know, this kindness is something he's gonna be directing at his romantic interest in the future. He's only got one body, so it'll be hard to be kind to two people at once. Just like Bear Senpai has only one body for his girlfriend and Ichinose-san. Of course, things may be a bit different if he truly cares for his sister, and that's what makes Senpai a kind person. That's how he got himself a cute girlfriend despite not being that handsome. Don't worry, master, I shall protect your sister in your stead. Oni-chan's romantic interest. That's right. And that interest is different from his love for his sister. I'm not telling her to cut all ties with him. However, if she just expects him to do all the work, then nothing will happen. She has to be proactive and seek him out. There's no guarantee that Sasaki will immediately realize whenever Yuki-chan is in pain. Then if I become his romantic interest, everything will be resolved. Jesus Christ, she's batshit crazy.